So uh, we've seen the, the, the world of foiling evolving with the years, uh, as you said, but it also has evolved from catamarans first to then monohulls, right? In the most recent America's Cup. Yeah. So question for you is, which one do you prefer? So for me, like it's, it's quite easy to answer because uh, I, I've grown up uh, with uh, monohulls and so I like much more the shape of the monohulls, but it's like two different kinds of, uh, of sailing yacht. Mm -hmm. They, they, they work uh, in a similar way, but not properly. But I think that from a technical point of view, there is the possibility to develop more in the monohull uh, field. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe someone okay. that is uh, that is uh, studying uh, the catamaran can uh, can uh, can say the opposite. But uh, we're good. Is... We're here. We're good with uh, the opinions. Their own opinions, and uh, and everybody can chip in with theirs. Uh, yeah, I agree. We've seen a lot of development in the monohulls. Uh, we've seen the boats change a lot uh, in the last two Americas Cup. Every boat has a different shape, right, to get out of the yes. water quickly. It, it allows also to like to work more on the. Um, like uh, naval architect, uh, like naval architecture of the boat, of the shape of the hull. Uh, in in catamarans, the hulls are pretty standard and uh, doesn't change much. Uh, they are like slender body, so very thin uh, body. Mm -hmm. In uh, in the mono hull uh, field, uh, the the boat has to be a shape that uh, helps them to take off and uh, and stuff like this. So maybe in that field, there is the possibility of, of much more development. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do you think? Uh, will we ever see a, a, a wing for a wing, uh, mainsail on uh, a monohull or is that something that wouldn't work, uh, because of, uh, engineering? So a wing, a wing foil, you mean uh, like the yeah. uh, F-15, uh, wing foil? The wing sail, yeah, the, the big main sail, right? Uh, we've seen the two skins for the America's Cup on the monohull. That's also a new invention. I think that I think that we will not see rigid wing for wing uh, wing sails uh, on monohulls because uh, I think that uh, the um, precision in uh, tuning uh, the sails that that uh, it can be reachable with uh, the AC-75 and the AC-40 and the AC is much higher than the, the, the shape change that you can have with a, a rigid wing. Okay. And so I think that uh, the, the, the soft wing is the development, is the next step uh, coming from, uh, from the rigid wing. Okay. Okay. So for this uh, uh, catamaran versus monohull uh, uh, dialogue, I'm going to pick the other side. In my opinion, one of the issues with these monohulls is that they still need batteries, right? To uh, yeah. pull up the foil and down. And I feel that's a bit against like the whole idea of sailing, where you sail only with the power of the wind. I know we're adding more and more electronics on the boat and so on. But still, when I see uh, the daggerboard going up and down, so the foil's going up and down on a CLGP boat, I can see it's probably a grinder yeah. that's provided yes. uh, this energy, right? Yes, Whereas yes. I can see there's a lot of power used to move the mainsail on the monohull, but then these foil arms, they have this electric noise going on yeah. up and down. So that's a part that maybe takes away a bit from sailing. Is it, do you think possible to have manpower to power the, the foil arms in a monohull or are they just too heavy because of the ballast weight? Uh, yeah, I think that this is the main, the main point, the key point. You need writing moment and uh, writing moment you have to place uh, the, the weight that gives you writing moment in the further uh, place uh, you have on the boat. So having this kind of uh, arm and uh, long arm and trying to, to move them is I think something uh, really challenging. Maybe it's possible. But maybe you have to change some rules also about the number of crew members. To maybe we go back to giving much more power uh, to, to do this. But from this point of view, I agree with you. <laughs> but uh, there is another interesting thing about, uh, about CLGP. So while they were testing the, the new T foil, they were also testing an, another device that is uh, an electric motor. Okay. And here comes the controversy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
uh, yes, like Russell Kutz thought about this uh, because they wanted to make uh, SailGP much more fun and much more like interesting to see. And sometimes uh, the problem of, of this uh, foiling yacht is that uh, they are really funny to watch while they are uh, they are flying, but when they come off the foils, uh, they became a bit boring. Just like in Dubai, right? Dubai, yes, <laughs> yes. Not the perfect play, the perfect uh, <laughs> competition to start uh, for the for the Italians. For the big... uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, all it's... another point. <laughs> But uh, and so they they are they are uh, trying to develop this uh, electric motor that they put under the central uh, part of the hull, and okay. so it's a device that can uh, come up and down. And so and they can use it for uh, a short amount of time only Ooh. to allow the boat to take off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like uh, it's like it's similar to a DRS. Okay. Device in uh, in Formula One. Okay, I and... know Matteo likes uh, his uh, connections to Formula yes. One, so I'll be happy to hear this one. They allow to to have a boost in mm -hmm. some moment of the of the race okay. to allow them to to take off, but then uh, they they cannot use it like more than uh, I don't know I don't remember how many times uh, during a regatta, and they have to wait like. Uh, and uh, uh, a certain after amount of time uh, before using using it again. So okay. they have to stay uh, stay up on foiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very really interesting. <laughs> I didn't know about it, so it's a great insight, uh, Antonio. Great for bringing it up. Let's move on now on your favorite team from the last season in CLGP, and maybe it's still your favorite team. <laughs> For sure, it will not be because this year there will be the Italian team, and so okay. I will for sure cheer for them. But uh, I was cheering a lot uh, for the New Zealanders because yep. I, I think that they were the main challenger against Australia. Also, <laughs> if they, they didn't win the season four because uh, the Spanish uh, did a okay. really good job, but uh, I think that they they are the one that uh, have the best skills to. Mm -hmm try to challenge the that uh, that is like uh, a monster in that uh, in oh, the yeah. one design class. CLGP and Tom Slingsby have been really a good, good uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, partnership along the first seasons of uh, CLGP. He was winning almost all the events all the time. He would <laughs> always see Australia foiling so far ahead, just so fast, so consistent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I agree. They had a very good trajectory with uh, Pete Burling and uh, Blair Took, I think, was on board yes, as well. Yes. Yeah, they had a great uh, uh, season last year. They were beaten right at the end. I can't remember if in the overall standings, Australia was ahead or New Zealand at the final race. I, I think it was like for... It was... Not much point. It very was close, like yeah. Points, yes. And then Australia maybe also had penalty points uh, in some race. Uh, they, they got yes, deducted possibly. some points. So it was very close at the end of the season. None of the two won because it was the Spanish taking a, a surprise win at the end of last season. But it's also a, a nice element of CLGP. It keeps the uncertainty up yeah. to the last race, right? In an event like uh, Dubai, it wasn't a great weekend. But the final race always delivers quite some spectacle because you know it's all up for grabs, yes, right? A lot of overtake uh, and uh, it's it's like very dynamic uh, as uh, are very dy dynamic regattas. Yeah. Also now, like in season five, at the beginning it was like a one-way regattas, and uh, Australia was always winning. Uh, sometimes Japan was uh, was trying to. To Nathan to Outreach was uh, was doing his own. Now I think that the level of the team are are equalizing a bit, are more uh, even. In this season, we will see something really, really, really spectacular. Yeah, with more foiling events, we get the sailors become better and better, and the playing field is always even. The boats are one design, so lots to look forward to. My favorite team last season was probably the Danish team. So from uh, Denmark. Uh, yeah. They had a very good season. Sehestev was uh, guiding the team very, very well. I feel they uh, even won an event, I think. Yes. Uh, but they were very consistent along all the season. I really liked them. Uh, they were always placing the boat very, very well and never doing anything too crazy, but uh, keeping it solid. And it shows, right? When you have a team 
and you build on that team without changing driver every weekend. It's that what maybe this consistency is what is needed to, to have the team that grows and then performs very well. Uh, at the end of the season, they were just short of making it to that final. I think they were in the mix with France and Spain, just all playing for that spot in the final. Uh, they didn't manage, but I think they're going to show what they're worth also uh, this season. Maybe they can bring it up to the big names of Australia and uh, New Zealand. I, with I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, so, somewhere yeah, else Yes, too. last year they were like the underdogs, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they performed very, very well. Yeah, coming from nowhere, but uh, they were, yes, they were sailing very, very well. Exactly, yeah. And uh, as we close off, we're going to introduce this new thing with our, all our guests. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. this is a question for uh, you, Antonio. So uh, what gets you up and foiling? So it means what is that thing that gives you that sensation of flying above the water, going so, so fast? So what makes you just uh, happy in life? I think that um, there are a lot of things that makes me happy in life. But <laughs> one of them is, I'm very happy to, to say it, is my job because uh, I'm working on something that is my passion. And so I think that this is the main, uh, the main uh, trust to my life. Okay. So what would you say to young people in university, maybe listening to our podcast that want to be a naval architect, just like you in the future? Is there any shout out you want to give to them? Yeah. Study a lot. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also keep your passion up like uh, you have to be interested uh, to read a lot uh, about uh, what uh, what you like uh, and uh, and try to go uh, in deep as uh, in deep as possible uh, to to find uh, the information that uh, can be reachable in the field you like yeah one always has to be very very curious of the mo yeah. uh, of the world that uh, surrounds us so on this wonderful note, very fitting for our podcast of uh, Up and Foiling. It was great having you, Antonio, Thank today. You. Uh, tune in the next time. See you. Bye-bye. Great, great also for me. Thank you. Thank you a lot for the possibility to, to, to speak with you. Great. Grand, Antonio. Remember to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcast or YouTube and please comment to let us know which topic you would like to be covered more in our podcast. <laughs>